there's plenty more guests for us to introduce you to, including in front of me right now, uh, a man named Ian by from Good News for Everyone. Hello, Ian. Hi there. How are you? <laughs> uh, yeah, we're doing all right. So uh, just tell us a little bit. Um, good News for Everyone could be all sorts of things. Um, I imagine, I think I know what it could be about, but just give us a little idea. What, what is Good News for Everyone all about? Okay, well, we, uh, as you say, it's uh, perhaps fairly obvious. It's about sharing the good news. We used to be known as Gideons, actually. People might know us by a former name, Gideons. We distribute Bibles in schools, hotels, hospitals, many areas of everyday life. Uh, a few years ago, we went through a rebranding. We uh, changed the name to Good News for Everyone because we really felt it said what we do, and that's about sharing the good news. Hey, look, if the title doesn't say what it does on a tin, Nick in that advert for just a moment. Um, I think it, it helps. Um, I, I remember having a Gideon's Bible, which I lost. I'm really sad about that because I remember in the back of the Gideon's Bible that I had, there were all these things that you might be feeling, whether you're sad or lonely, and there were scriptures that you could go to. And even as somebody who actually was quite comfortable with the Bible, sometimes I didn't quite know where to look for what I needed. And there were some real golden gems in the Bible. They're not even hidden. But if you don't know where to look, it can be quite hard to find it. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and that's what we find, particularly when you go into schools. Uh, the reason for having these helps is to, is to help uh, school pupils that might be coming for homes where there is no Bible. And it might be the first time that they have ever opened a Bible. And, you know, how do you help them to search the scriptures? Where do you point them to? And what we find with the helps is it just gives them somewhere to start, somewhere to point them to, to begin to explore the Bible. And, you know, I come across many people and what they say is, oh, we remember that testament we got at school because there was helps there that helped us to explore the scripture. So that's very important to us to have them there. Uh, so you're here at the gathering for men. Um, the, the obvious question is that I'm asking everybody, have you been here before? And what got you here this weekend working for Good News uh, for Everyone? Well, we've been coming for a few years ago. Uh, and uh, once you've been to the gathering once, why would you not come again? So in answer to your question, we've been once and we keep coming back. And I think we, we hear that story time and time again is, uh, yeah, we keep coming back. But what, what my, my, I always feel about the gathering, it, it's, a, it's a fun weekend. Uh, it's, it's men getting together, you know, it's barbecues, it's beers, it's lots of fun. But through it all, the gospel is preached. And I just feel it's such a fantastic event to take men to and and who who are not christians and in, in the midst of all the fun and, and all the great things that go on they hear the gospel preach very clearly and very soundly and uh, if i can just say there's, there's somebody in our party who's been coming for several years now he's not yet a christian but he keeps coming back because he enjoys it so much I think that says so much. Uh, we were privileged and honoured to go out onto the field as our delegates were arriving, They're arriving on site, and uh, me and Nathan were out there doing some interviews. And if there's one thread that I heard time and time again from all these different people from different parts of the country, different backgrounds, different ages, different church denominations, the one thing that sort of ties it all together was we love coming here because we love 2,000 guys singing. Uh, we love the camaraderie. We love the sort of spirit and excitement and anticipation that sort of comes through and that just makes me so happy this is my first year and i can't wait to come back okay. next next year and we've barely begun yeah absolutely i think the, the, the first impressions i remember the first time i i went into the big tent it was the start of the meeting graham kendrick and his band was playing and you were coming into these two thousand men worshiping the lord <laughs> and uh, it was just such an incredible experience and i i think this is just such a, a special event and, and we come here obviously because we enjoy the time, but it also gives us an opportunity to share a little bit about the work that we do. Uh, I work full time for Good News for Everyone. And so to come out here and to talk to those that support us. And, and in fact, today, I, I've the last three people I, I spoke to on our stand, they all said, ah, oh, we remember getting that testament and we remember how it helped us. And that, that encourages us in our work to keep on going. Because sometimes you do think, who reads these scriptures? but you get these encouragements that the Lord says, you distribute them and I will ensure that people read them. And that encourages us. Amen. I've heard that from a few people that I've been chatting to since three o'clock today, that we, we don't necessarily know what the, the good is that we do. We don't necessarily get to see the end result of 
someone's life turned around or all the good that happens. I was sobbing earlier, chatting to a guy from the Christian Police Association because he helped a guy who had no shoes. He bought shoes for this guy. Well, actually, fans were shoes in the police station nobody else wanted. And then it was so much long later that this guy met him. He bought some food for a guy one time. And then 10 years later, when he was struggling on a shift, cold, a, a, a traffic incident, this guy rocks up and says, I'll get you some food. We don't necessarily see the fruit of what we do, but that doesn't mean to say we shouldn't try. No, absolutely. I mean, I always often reminded of the scripture that says that uh, a Paul, Paulus plants, Paul waters, <laughs> and God gives the increase. And, and that's what we do. And, and I think throughout all of the, the stands and the organisations represented here today, we, we all play some part and we all have got different parts. You, you guys on, on the radio station, you play your part, we play our part and God brings it all together in his kingdom purposes. Uh, so whatever part we play, we're one part of that whole uh, and that's, that's just such great encouragement. Which I love. And of course the Bible tells us that we're all parts of one body and we're all different parts, but actually when all those parts work together, some amazing things can happen. And then sometimes we just need to swallow our pride and think, I don't want to do this, but this is what I can do. So let me do what I can do with what I have um, in the best way that I can, which is a phrase I've used ever since COVID first happened. What have I got that I can do? Let me do that to the best of my ability. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think also there's a, a phrase in the Bible where Jesus says about the woman that anointed them. He says she did what she could. So she did what she could with what she was given. And that's all that God asks us. He asks us to do what we can with what he's given us. Uh, I wanted to finish my conversation here with this lovely man from Good News for Everyone. You may have heard the Gideons, and this is what they are now called. Um, and we were just finishing off really about the fact that we can do something. I'm not quite sure where the microphone dipped out for you, but let's just go back through that little part of the conversation again, because we were just talking with me about how we can all do something. Yeah, yeah. yeah, what I was saying is that Jesus said to the woman that anointed him, uh, when she was rebuked, he said she did what she could. And I often think that's what God asks us to do, to do what we can with what he has given us. And as we invest in his kingdom with what he has given us by his grace, the return will glorify him. So, you know, I just want to encourage everyone, uh, whatever God's given you, do what you can and he will bless it. Fabulous. Um, if people want to know more about you now, what's the what's the website they can come to? Yeah, it's uh, goodnewsuk.com. Uh, go on there. You'll find it out about us, and uh, we've got lots of new resources there. We've got a fantastic new resource. Uh, it's Luke's Gospel in a magazine form called Explore, which helps people explore the Christian faith. We launched it last year. Uh, tens of thousands have been distributed. Many churches are using it, and we delight to give it completely free of charge. So if you're interested, uh, www.goodnewsuk.com or email info at goodnewsuk.com and ask for Explore, and we will be delighted to send you copies.